Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Randy Marsicano. I work in the Strategic Management Services Group here at Wolf & Company, and we're going to be talking today about ERM, or Enterprise Risk Management Maturity. Specifically, I want to talk a little bit about what does that mean, ERM maturity? How do you recognize how mature you are and if you want to and how to take that maturity to the next level? I've got some key takeaways for you. And uh, if you have, I will have my contact information at the end of the presentation in case you have any questions based on anything that we went over today. So let's get started. What is ERM maturity? We've been, we've been doing this work for a while. I've been with the, with the firm for 16 years now and specializing in ERM for the last seven. And over all that time, we, we've, we've noticed that there are levels of maturity that most organizations really fit into. And I've got some display here to, to walk us through this a little bit and, and get us comfortable with understanding what those levels are. There's three of them. The first is what we call compliance or check the box risk management. There's a prevailing mindset when you're in compliance or check the box risk management. And that is, I will do what I'm required to do to keep the regulators happy. So if you're developing risk assessments or KRI programs or whatever it is, uh, but when you're done, you, you put them on the shelf and don't really use them because you don't see value because you're doing it because you have to, you're probably in that compliance or check the box risk management maturity level. As you start to move up the curve, you can go into what we call integrated risk management. And that's where you start to think, I wanna break down some of these silos. I wanna be able to see the threats across the whole organization and understand where the emerging risk is coming from. If you keep continuing up the curve, then you get to strategic risk management. And this is where you see enterprise risk management as a strategic initiative that actually adds value and gives you a competitive advantage in the marketplace. There really is no good or bad place to be on this curve. It's just important to understand where you are so that you know how to react and how to think about maybe what you wanna do next. What I thought was really interesting about this just recently is at our recent user conference, we had a couple of examiners, one from the FDIC, one from the NCUA, uh, and, and they spoke about maturity and, and they, they used different words, uh, but I'm going to paraphrase the, the concept that they had that was the same. And that's that smaller institutions tend to be more check the box based, and that's okay. Larger institutions tend to be more strategic, and that's okay too. It's the mid sized organizations in the middle that have the challenge. And my interpretation of that is, is this is growing pains. This is a result of not knowing really where you are and what your next steps would be if you want to either stay the same or move up the maturity curve. I want to be careful here, though, and, and, and just make sure we understand that regulatory pressure shouldn't be the only reason that you want to move up the curve. I hear from clients all the time things like, I'm getting ready to grow but I want to make sure I understand where all the little fires are so they don't get big before I understand where they are and, and, and how to deal with it. Or I'm going to be moving into different geographies or different products and services or go after different customers or different members. And I want to make sure that I've got risk management in line so that I don't miss anything and end up making an expensive mistake. These are all really great reasons to want to move up the maturity curve. Really quick here, uh, I want to just take you through a scenario of what strategic ERM maturity actually looks like. And we can start with the strategic planning that your organization performs. We all, we all understand our current and projected new geographies, products and services, customers and members. That's all part of our strategic planning, and we all have that. But when you're, when you're mature in your enterprise risk management, then you have a risk appetite statement. And that tells you if you are achieving those goals safely, uh, that can be a big deal if you're taking on more risk as an organization. There's oversight, your risk committees, your board level committees, your management level committees. These are, this is the oversight that holds that accountability that, that says, okay, you have these strategic plans, you wanna get there safely, show me the metrics, show me the measures so that we can, we can document that we're being safe. 
there's enterprise risk assessments. This is how you understand where the threats to your organization are, and if you have adequate controls in place to keep the organization safe. And the last step are the risk indicators, or what are often called KRIs or KPIs. These are very quantitative types of measures. There's tolerances and limits involved, and that's your actual risk appetite is the tolerance and limits. And if you understand where you are generally in those areas, then you can confidently say we're keeping the organization safe as we achieve our strategic objectives, or we've got some challenges in these areas and maybe we need to, to make some adjustments as we move along. So I've got a test here, a little quick test, and you can answer these uh, questions to yourselves. Uh, but this is th these are some good markers to see where we are or where you are in terms of your ERM maturity. So five questions here. Uh, the first one is, do you have a dedicated ERM executive? And I didn't say CRO on purpose because the title really doesn't matter, but do you have a dedicated ERM executive? If you don't, then you're likely check, check the box type of uh, spot on the maturity curve because if you don't have a dedicated executive, you're, you're, it's probably not important. I don't know how else to say it. It's probably not important. If you have uh, an ERM executive, but perhaps they're not dedicated, you're probably along the integrated area. You're starting to think, here are some, here's some value I can have, but maybe you're just testing things out. Hey, if you've got a dedicated executive, a CRO, someone who's got a seat at the table, you're more likely in the strategic zone, if you will. Next question, what do you look at when evaluating the risk? If, you're, if your answer is you're not really clear, what does that mean? Or I've got a couple of risk assessments, maybe I've got an IT risk assessment or something like that, you're, you're probably more in the, uh, in the check the box area. If you have a collective view when you look at, uh, when you evaluate risk, consolidated view, looking at the results of multiple different risk assessments together, you're probably more on the integrated side of the curve. And if you've got analytics, you've got dashboard reporting, consolidated threat and control registers, you're likely more on the strategic part of the curve. Do you have an ERM committee? If you don't, or it's combined with another committee like audit or supervisory, you're likely check the box. It's, it's just something that, that you're doing. If you have a management level ERM committee specifically, you're likely integrated because now you have a management level part of your organization that is looking at the collection of ERM artifacts, if you will. Uh, and, and you're starting to, to integrate that into the operations of the organization. If you've got a board level ERM committee, you're likely on the strategic side. This is, it, something's really important if it has its own board level committee and the board is gonna approach things more strategically. And that's, that's a pretty good indicator you're, you're more up in the strategic zone. Next question, what worries you when managing risk? What keeps you up at night? When, when folks say, hey, listen, I just want to keep the regulators happy. I just want a good exam. That's likely check the box. And that's okay, but that's likely where you are. If you say, I want to understand little problems before they get big, you're more likely in the integrated zone. And if you believe it's important to your overall strategy, in other words, you, your risk management program is part of achieving strategic objectives and you worry about that, you're more likely on the strategic end of the curve. Uh, last one, uh, actually that is the last one. So there, there's no, I, I wanna make sure I say this again, uh, there, there's no good or bad to, to where you are. I, I, and it's important that, that, that everybody understands that if you're check the box and, and, and that works for your organization, you're, you're, you're small, you're not very complicated. Think back to that comment I made from our, the examiners who attended our user conference. It's likely okay. Uh, if you do wanna grow, uh, if, you, if you're gonna be changing things strategically, it might be something to think about maybe going up to the next level. And that's the segue into the next part of the conversation here is how do you identify if what you're doing is working 
for your organization. So before I get into, uh, into that, I just wanna give us all a level set onto the three lines of defense model. This, this is, the rest of my talk is really based on this and, and I wanna get us all on, on the same page with that. So the first line of defense are the risk takers in the organization. These are, sometimes they're called line managers or business unit managers. They're the folks with the boots on the ground. They're the folks that are performing the controls and, and following the, pop, the procedures and, and, and implementing the controls. It's the first line of defense, it makes sense. The second line of defense are the risk managers. This is your, your CRO, your enterprise risk manager. A lot of times we see compliance officers in, in, in the second line of defense role, but these are the folks that own the risk management process. They don't own the risk, but they own the risk management process and they're in charge of, of keeping things like risk appetite statements and, and links between ERM and strategic planning uh, alive and together. The third line is independent audit. Uh, the pretty straightforward there. I think we all pretty much know what that is. But what I want to do for the rest of this talk here is to overlay the markers for how you know where you are on the curve across all three lines of defense. So I'm going to unpack all of these as we keep talking here. But on the first line, we're going to talk about your risk assessments, your policies and procedures, and your testing on the second line, we're going to talk about monitoring, resources, oversight, and your board discussions, and got a couple pieces to share with you on the internal audit side. So that's, that's how we're going to finish up talking here today. So let's start with the first line of defense. So how do you know where you are on the first line of defense as far as ERM maturity? Let's talk about risk assessments first. If your risk assessments are more focused on the operational side of the house, Maybe they're, they're a little old. Uh, maybe you're not really using the results here. You might be more on the check the box side. When your risk assessments start to become more integrated with operational, uh, operational risks rather get integrated with market risks, you're probably moving up the curve. What does that mean? Well, that means that you're taking the, the operational risk side of the house and starting to move that maturity up to what the market side of the house already has. We see this all the time. Alco, you know, they're, they're, the, the, the monitoring activities, the way it's tracked, the, the way the, where the threats are is understood is always very clear on the market risk side of the house. You start to bring the operational side up, you're getting into the integrated zone. For strategic ERM on the risk assessment side, the ability to integrate fully the both sides of the house and actually have some analytics, you know, maybe top threat dashboards or, or, or tracking of these threats in, in, in one consolidated register. Now we're getting more into the ER, into the strategic ERM side of the house. Let's look at policies and procedures. If every policy operates in its own silo, you're likely check the box. It, the, the policies are, and procedures are doing the one thing that they're supposed to do. That's okay, it's not very strategic, but, but that's okay. When you start to centralize those policies, you're moving up into the ERM, an integrated ERM part of the curve. So what does that mean? That means that you're collectively looking at these risk management related policies and understanding how they work together, put them all into, into one ownership so they can be managed together, integrated. If you move up to the strategic side of the house, now there's really govern, governance over all of these, these policies. They start to consolidate into single documents. They start to to be aligned so that they don't conflict with one another and they all fall under the same governance program, be it a, a risk committee or the full board or an audit committee or what or supervisory committee, what, what have you. On the testing side of the house, <clears throat> for compliance or check the box, we don't really see a lot of management testing. I'm not talking about auditing, I'm talking about management testing. Usually BCP is, is covered, BCP testing, no matter what part of the curve you're on, but there's a lot of management testing besides BCP that can be done. When you move up to the integrated part of the curve, the testing scope starts to, to increase. 
Uh, we start to see more cyber related testing. We start to see testing centrally managed by that office of risk and reported on all as one unit. And it's more than just BCP. Uh, we've got some cyber, there could be there could be third party program testing, what have you. When you move up to the strategic side of the curve, now we've got testing that supports risk-based monitoring activities. So what does that mean? That means that when you consolidate all those risk assessments and come up with the top threats, maybe you start from a management perspective, specifically testing against controls for those threats to make sure that everything is working, but you're being very intentional, you're being very prioritized, and you're looking at the collection of threats rather than people in just their own area looking at their own threats and doing management testing over those. If, if you're looking at them collectively, you're likely up in the strategic end of the curve. So let's move to the second line now. Monitoring from a, from a second line of defense perspective. If monitoring is not happening or it's not centralized or only the market risk activities are being monitored and not the operational, you're probably in check the box. You're, you're doing what you have to do. When you move to the integrated part of the curve, now you've got some operational metrics that start to emerge. I was talking before about ALCO. You know, there's always good metrics in an ALCO meeting, um, concentration and, and, and uh, capital ratios and things of that nature. And, and all those are working good and mature, but a lot of times we don't see operational metrics. What about monitoring customer or member complaints? What about monitoring for hits on the firewall? What about monitoring for compliance testing? When you start to get that type of monitoring in place, you're starting to get to integrate because you're bringing that level of maturity up to what's happening on the market risk side of the house. When you're strategic, it's all about KRIs. It's all about understanding all of the high risk threats to the organization and monitoring those specific threats, regardless of where they are, market, operational, strategic, reputation, it would matter at that point. If you've identified a high risk threat, you've got some monitoring happening, that's strategic. On the resources side, if you have an acting CRO or a risk manager or, or maybe nothing at all looking after risk, you're probably compliance, you're, you're, you're doing what you have to do. When you start to have what I call the office of the CRO, because sometimes you don't always you don't have to have a CRO per se to be integrated, but you should have someone dedicated in that office. Sometimes I see a risk manager or an enterprise risk manager role. That's okay. You're starting to grow into that and have someone looking at this collectively across the organization. That's integrated. If you have a dedicated CRO, specifically now the C, the chief, the seat at the table, if you will, that's strategic ERM. It, it, that's a good indicator that you're, you're, you're in entering that part of the curve. On the oversight side of the house, if your oversight is performed in operational management committees, uh, a lot of times we'll see uh, like an IT or an operations steering committee also looking after some risk management components. That's okay, but you're probably in the compliance zone. If you have a management level risk committee, so this is uh, a committee that look specifically at risk, but they are at the management level, then you're probably integrated because you're just starting to get those things going. Uh, and, and that's where you are. If, if there is a board risk committee, you're likely strategic. And I touched upon this earlier, the concept that if, if you've carved out a bunch of board members to, to take a look at this, it's going, to, it's going to be on the strategic side because that's just the way they operate and the way they think and what they're going to expect to see. Word discussion. If uh, on the compliance side of the house, if audit committee, ALCO, credit, uh, if, if these three board committees are there, but they don't integrate with one another, you're probably compliance. They're doing what they have to do and, and, and that's it. When risk committee starts to be part of an existing board committee, then you're moving up to the integrated side or, or part of the curve rather. And strategic is once again, when you have a full risk committee uh, at the board level, in addition to 
your, your audit or supervisory committees, ALCO credit and, and so on. I hope you can start to see the trend here, uh, especially on the second line of how you move up the curve and, 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 and what that looks like. On the third line is internal audit. Uh, this is a pretty simple row here, not much to it. In the, if you're compliance, then you've got an audit risk assessment looking after things like transaction risk, financial technology, compliance, and maybe whether or not you have specific risk assessments on the management side, they don't really integrate too very well. Everybody's doing what they have to do. On the integrated side, you start to see the risk assessments drive the audit planning. That doesn't mean they're taken verbatim, but they certainly are part now in, in an important integral part of that audit planning. That's how you know you're starting to get up into integrated. When you're strategic, you've got full risk-based audit planning. This is, this is right from the risk assessments of the organization, and it covers the first, first and second line of defense. We're starting to see this a lot now. Actually, we've been seeing this a lot now where the audit group actually will audit the ERM part of the organization. So sometimes we have to take a little bit of our own medicine and, and that's okay. But if you're doing that, it's strategic. The activities being performed on the second line of defense, if you will, are important enough that we wanna make sure that it's working the way that it's supposed to. If you're there, you certainly are on the strategic end of the curve. I want to give you a couple of key takeaways before we land this plane here. You know, and, and I said this before, and, and it's, it, it's really true. No place on the curve is good or bad. You know, that being said, depending on your circumstance, you could be on a bad place on, on the curve for you. And we talked about this. If you're looking to grow, if you're starting to become more complex, then maybe you're on a bad spot for you, but there is no good or bad spot per se on the curve. You know you're gonna to wanna to move up because certain things are gonna happen. And that's that desire to make enterprise risk management strategic. If you're gonna grow into new geographies, products and services, customers and members become more complex, whatever, whatever that is, that's gonna trigger that you need to move. And, and I hope that some of the concepts I've given you throughout this presentation are gonna help you identify when that is and, and help you understand, well, what should that look like? And the last one is enterprise risk management can be an enabler to your strategic goals. This isn't just a cost center. Well, I guess it is if you're on the compliance side of the house and that's okay, but it, it's so much more. There, the ability to achieve your strategic goals safely uh, it is very important, especially with a larger, more complex organization. And I want to say that out loud, and I want to get that concept into everybody's minds, because there's, there's more going on here than just, just something to do. Uh, it, it makes a huge difference to be able to arrive at your goals safely. Well, I hope this was helpful. Uh, here is my contact details on the screen right here. I, if you have any questions, if you want to speak with me about anything that I that I've said or need some clarification, please feel absolutely free to reach out. Uh, I'm I'm always here and I'm and I'm always available. And just as a as a little aside here, uh, you may or may not hear uh, some some background noise here. I've got uh, my little little grandsons at the house. My wife's looking after them here, and they are. Uh, six years old and eight years old, and it's really cute for me to hear them in the background playing and, and, and making some noise. But I think, well, I hope you all feel the same way, but I think myself and all of us would feel a little different if they were 16 and 18. So their maturity is, is important. Smaller, less complicated organizations, it's okay. It's okay to not be uh, high on the maturity curve, but, but as you grow, there is that expectation. So anyway, I hope this was helpful for you and I'll hope to speak with you soon. Thank you for attending. Mm -hmm.